Time for the spooky forest's threads. All right, I'll start with a story from my life. Be me. 20 years old, still with parents because poor. Means I have to travel with them. Time to visit family in that really rural, southern part of the world. Called Tennessee. Fucking backwoods as fuck man, not inbred but these people are like two seconds away from donning KKK masks or something, holy shit. But family get together means we have to hang out. Decent people when you get to know them. Somehow, group up with three cousins and a friend from out of town. Call them Eddie, Garrett, Austin, and Trent. These are the names of people I know related to, but not in the right configuration. I'm not great at making up names. We sneak off with a six pack my grandpa left out. Good man, but terribly unobservant. Find a clearing a few minutes out, maybe an hour, fuck I don't know. Adrenaline kills my sense of time. Garrett, the local cousin in these here parts, seems really nervous. Older than me, but keeps whimpering every time we push forward. He carries an old rifle from like the old days when they hunted for a living. Eddie and Austin are keeping him cool, telling him we'll only be out here for a bit. Light up a small lamp. We're all getting a little tipsy, but not drunk. I have like half a can and call it good. Still don't have a taste for alcohol I guess. Garrett suddenly says we shouldn't TV here. Well no shit, we stole beer from our hit grandpa. No, man, we really shouldn't TV here. We should leave. We debate arguing, I'm digging the atmosphere. Suddenly, it gets really fucking cold. We put on jackets we dragged along but holy fuck man is it cold. We really shouldn't TV here, guys. We have to leave. Austin laughs and Trent grunts. Lamp flickers as a bug bumps it. Big ass bugs and cold wind, fuck this place. Garrett, now super pissed, picks up Austin and basically stands him up like a good little soldier. We re leaving. Except he s not telling us, he s not even looking at us. He s yelling behind Trent. Trent and I are trying to figure out what the fuck we're doing, since we're about to reenact Hatfields and the fucking McCoys in the middle of bumfuck nowhere. Suddenly, Garrett picks up his gun and aims at Trent. Austin drops like a rock, Trent is scared shitless. I'm wondering what the fuck I'm going to say to the cops about all this. We're leaving, and t we, fellas. Trent slowly turns around out of curiosity. I swear I have never seen a look as terrified as the one on Trent's face. Austin sees Trent, looks at me. I stare back, too chicken shit to see what's going on behind Trent. Trent suddenly sprints past Garrett, who keeps aiming his gun at whatever the fuck is back there. Anon, Austin, don't move until I tell you, but when I say it, run like a digger in a hen house. At this point, too scared to call out that bullshit, just dumbly nod my head. Try to sneak a peek dash. Anon. Don T move. Garrett quietly moves, picks up lantern by hooking it with the muzzle. We're leaving now, we don't want any trouble. We didn't T mean anything by it. Something fucking moves in the bushes. Cold gets colder, literally a second from pissing myself. Garrett stops breathing for a moment, lantern swings gently. Run. I am not a fast man. Tonight I was fucking Usain Bolt. Austin is like five feet from me, I can hear him crying. I'm crying too. I hear three gunshots, one every few seconds. And then the scream. You know as I'm typing this, I realize I'm actually tearing up. This shit is not a fucking joke, but it feels better to write it down than just bottle it up. Anyways. 
Have you ever heard a coyote yelp they sound like they're sorta young kids crying and yelling. I grew up with coyotes in the backyard. This did not sound like a coyote. It was high pitched, higher than a coyote. And it was right fucking behind us. Austin and I don't even look to each other, we just keep running, finally clearing the trees and entering the meadows near a creek. Garrett appears behind us, rifle slung over his shoulder and he s shouting to keep running. The scream gets louder, but not like in volume. It's getting closer. Garrett tells us to keep going, we're almost across the line. He full stops and takes another shot before moving again. Oh god this is show ed.jpg suddenly, more fucking screams. They are everywhere. We see an old fence not more than 30 yards away, Austin fucking leaps that shit like a gymnast, I'm like a few seconds behind him, land on my back and see stars. Garrett leaps over and takes aim again, completely out of breath. We re on our side, fuck off. Screaming literally stops, there's no fucking crickets or shit to fill the void, just three adult men crying like bitches. Austin on his knees, fairly certain he just vomited. I'm not even here anymore. Garrett, where's the fucking lantern? Garrett keeps his gun up, but his knees are shaking. Garrett whispers back in the trees. We all look up and see the tree line, sure enough, lantern is sitting in trees at the edge of the meadows. There's something standing near the trees. It's way too fucking tall. It doesn't he really move, just jitters back and forth, like someone cut out the in-between frames of an animation. It moves back and forth across the trees, the light blocks out the details, which was fine by me. It turns and sort of hovers across the ground. Its knees are fucking backwards holy shit. Garrett is heaving now, his breath is ragged but he seems to be okay. Garrett what the fuck? Shut up. I'll admit it, I'm full on sobbing now but I'm so cried out I can't actually make tears, just blubber in the corner. We're on our side, fuckers, you know the rules. Another one appears from the woods and starts to jitter. Garrett aims up and shoots again, I feel my ears ring for a second. The figures fucking freak out and rush back and forth across the tree lines, falling in and out of the light. For a second, I think I see three shapes moving around, but I don't care, I just want this shit to stop. The light in the trees flickers, and Garrett curses. When the light goes out, run as fast as you can and scream and holler for grandpa. Don't stop even if I tell you to. Austin doesn't he even argue, I'm nodding, and turning to stare at the trees. The light flickers again but comes back. The shapes stop moving. Fuck they got bigger. No, they're closer. The light flickers, I expect them to get bigger again. But the light doesn't he come back on and we fucking book it. Austin takes the lead, rushes into the forest behind us screaming for grandpa, Garrett doesn't he even hold the rifle for a shot anymore, he s just running like we are. We hear the screams again, but they're getting closer, oh god they're closer. Suddenly, lights, fucking lights everywhere, the screams stop. Grandpa is like 50 yards away with my dad and like three distant uncles and some black dude in a sweatshirt. They all have guns, what the fuck. Garrett and Austin fucking slide to the ground in front of Grandpa, I don't give a fuck and just crash into my dad who just sort of hugs me for a second as I keep crying. Garrett is saying a bunch of things but he is saying it so fast I can't understand him with his accent anymore. Grandpa and one of my uncles just nod. Where's your friend? Trent ran past us, didn't he he reach you? Grandpa grabs me and Garrett, Austin is curled up weeping on the ground. Take him to the house hide him in the guest room with no windows. They seen what he looks like. 
I fucking want to go home, or to whatever the fuck counts for home. Grandpa says I need to go with them, says Garrett has a good gun. We walk through the woods again, have to admit, feel a lot safer with all the guns. The black guy whispers something to Grandpa, my dad keeps marching, hand on my shoulder. Garrett starts calling out for Trent, tells me to start calling too. We keep calling out, the black guy says something to Grandpa again. We reach the fence again. Exact same spot, vomit still on ground where Austin was. Grandpa waves flashlight around, illuminates the meadows, uncles are doing the same. Suddenly, shape darts out of the tree line, crying and huffing. It's Trent. He stops a few feet from the fence and falls on his knees, he is crying like me. Grandpa and uncles totally quiet, Garrett and I don't move. I thought I lost you guys back there at the campsite. I'm scared because nobody is saying anything. Garrett talks first. Where did you go, Trent? I got lost ahead of you, got turned around I guess. Grandpa leans in and whispers something into the black guy's ear, he nods, dad tightens grip on my shoulder. Trent looks confused. Aaron T you guys gonna help. Grandpa moves his gun a bit. Help with what? Help me get over there. The fence is tall and I'm tired. Grandpa and my uncle slowly lift their guns. What do you mean you look fine? Haha. <laughs> funny guys, seriously, let me in. Grandpa is deathly serious now, I have never felt so scared of a man. Trent looks nervous, almost antsy now, keeps looking back to the tree line. I felt like something was off obviously but I'm too fucking scared and stupid to figure out what it is. Help me over the fence. The black guy talks up. Come over here, kid. Trent fucking stops and glares at the black guy. Not you. You can't. It's not your property. Grandpa starts to raise the gun now, my dad tightens his grip. He is a friend of the family. He is not the owner, it's rude. Trent was invited to the reunion. Trent is still on his knees, but he feels like he is just waiting to pounce. You know that feeling of superiority you get when you stand over someone on their knees I wasn't he feeling that, not one bit. At this moment I realized what seemed so weird about Trent. He wasn't he fucking breathing. Trent is now staring daggers at grandpa, uncles are training their guns on grandpa, the black guy is just holding the flashlight on Trent's face. My dad whispers something into my ear along the lines of Trent will be fine. Grandpa shoots the gun into the air, just like Garrett did, and then waits for the shot to stop ringing out. You aren't invited. This is our side, you know the rules. Grandpa and my uncle slowly start to back away, Garrett and my dad guiding me back. The black guy keeps the flashlight on Trent and moves in time with my grandpa. One of my uncles lags behind, nods to grandpa and keeps pointing at Trent while we back away. The black guy is slowly moving the... I shoot and he fucking look. I shoot and he fucking look. I fucking look. The light is still trained on Trent. But Trent is moving to the tree line. He is moving to the trees like he is a puppet being dragged back. I wanted to scream, but it's caught in my throat and my father grabs my head and turns it forward. Trent will be fine, anonymous. The screams start back up, but they're distant. Garrett looks over his shoulder but grandpa keeps marching. We make it to the house, the party is dying down. I head inside. I'm basically numb now. I hear Austin crying from one of the rooms. Dad takes me inside, lays me down and tucks me in for the first time since I was 10. The 20 year old in me is indignant. The terrified little shit I am doesn't he care. 
I spend the rest of the night staring at a wall before falling asleep to the sound of gunshots and far off screaming. I wake up the next day. Grandpa is sitting at table with most of extended family, smoking, and reading. Garrett is playing with some of the younger cousins, Austin is watching television. Dad hands me some eggs and a piece of toast. Smiles at me like nothing fucking happened. Garrett sees me, smiles and motions me over. Trent went home this morning, he s okay. Nobody is fucking okay who the fuck said we were okay what the fucking fuck happened. Garrett gives me a look and quietly states, as matter of factly as possible. Last night didn't he happen. Trent is okay. Drop it. I found out later Trent had been found by some neighbors down the road. He apparently woke up in the brush and booked it home. He was convinced he was hung over and that explained all the bruises he found on his back and neck. I only asked my grandpa what happened once. He just said that he s had trouble with the people on the nearby land, they keep trying to get onto his property. I asked why they hadn't he taken it. He looked right fucking at me and said I haven't he invited them in, Anon. That s what? He wouldn't he answer anything after that, just said not a problem to everything. It's been three years since then. I had various visits to family that ended with similar results, but nothing has ever come close to the fear I felt that night. Part of me wants to look it up and see what the fuck those things were. Another part is desperately repressing that urge. I would say is was the closest I ever got to a skinwalker incident, but I can never figure out what the fuck was with the side thing. Anyone feel like sharing feels good to talk about this shit with new people.